I'm always getting asked, how do I make my animations look more realistic? What techniques can I use to make my renders look more like real life? Well, the answer is so simple. Use real life in your renders. I've been experimenting a lot with this recently and now I'm ready to share my technique for easy camera tracking in Blender. I put a link to my footage and all the models used in the description below. Okay, so in Blender, instead of clicking general as you normally probably do, click on the VFX setup. This will open up a tracking setup ready to go. I'm just gonna slide this up a bit because we don't need these two top windows at the minute. The next thing we're going to do is open the tracking footage. So click open in the middle, navigate to your tracking footage. It's called tracked footage, open clip. Now you can see just over here, actually there's some information about the frame rate and the resolution of the clip. So just in your settings uh, over here, make sure the resolution of the Blender project matches your footage. And also make sure the frame rate, this is uh, 25 frames per second. Make sure that matches as well. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, click set scene frames. This basically makes the Blender project the same length as your clip in frames. Click prefetch to load the footage into the cache file. And then we're going to set, let me just make this a little bit bigger, set motion model to location, rotation, and scale. Just over here in the render settings, a couple of other things, just change the color management from filmic to standard. Um, and also where it says film here, set this to transparent. Change your render engine to cycles, GPU compute, and 16 frames should be enough for both rendering and the viewport. Okay, now looking at the tracking footage, I'm just gonna play it for you. So it's quite a simple scene. It's um, basically a camera sort of rotating around this space here. You'll see I put a couple of tripods in where I want the car to stand in. This is just to give uh, Blender an extra help in terms of where things are and how the camera's moving. You'll also notice that it's an overcast day with no strong shadows. So if you look at underneath the tripod, you can actually see the, the shadow is very soft with no hard edges. This is gonna be important later, so pay attention to that. So the next thing we're going to do is actually add markers to the scene to, for Blender to track. So go back to the start of your, your frame one. And if you click on detect features over here, um, Blender automatically finds points of high contrast within the image that it can use to track. Click down here where it says detect features and distance, that's basically the, the, the minimum distance between the two tracking markers. We're going to reduce that from 120 to 60. Gives us a whole lot more markers to play with. Okay, next thing we need to do is basically track forward. So click this little button down here. And you'll see here now that Blender, all of these lines down here, the red and the green lines, basically show how Blender has tracked those markers across the scene right through to the end. And actually it shows you, as we get to the end, it's only managed to track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven markers all together. So to give Blender a bit of a hand, make it a bit easier, go to about frame 100, click on detect features again, and then track forward again. And we can repeat this a couple of times. So basically what I'm doing, I'm just looking for anywhere in the foot, in the footage down below where there's not too many, where sort of these lines sort of um, start to disappear. So about frame 180, detect features, track forward. And I'll perhaps do the same again around frame 240. Detect features, track forward. Okay, that gives Blender loads and loads of uh, tracking markers to work with. So now we've got all the tracking markers set. We just need to go to the solve tab. Okay, so we're going to solve for focal length. Uh, you can leave the rest of these things the same. Keyframe A and B are kind of, basically it's asking for two points where nothing much changes. So all you need to do now is click solve camera motion. Okay, now what's happened here, you can actually see the blue line down here shows where the camera movement is. 
and we've got a solve error up here of 30 pixels, which is not, not great. We really want to get this down to sort of one pixel or less. Um, basically what's happened is Blender's picking up some markers which are either disappearing or moving in an erratic way. I can see one up here. It's just kind of tracking something that's not there. All of these points where it's not correctly tracked is kind of upsetting the solving in the camera motion. So what we need to do is basically filter out all the dud markers. So if you click on the clean up little uh, icon here, click on filter tracks, and where it says track threshold, increase that to say 20. Let's try 20 for a start. So now all the markers with a bad track is basically are filtered now. So just press X to delete them. And now you'll see down here, we've kind of lost some of these more crazy tracks. So if you just click solve camera motion again, We've got a solve error now of just 11 pixels. So it's it's not there yet, but it's getting better. So we'll filter the tracks again. Let's try a threshold of 10. Press X to delete those markers. And solve the camera motion one more time. And now we've got a solve error of just 0.55 pixels, which is perfect for what we need. Okay, a couple more things before we hop back into the regular Blender window. If you just zoom in, by rolling the mouse wheel. What I'm looking for is markers that are on the floor that are green. So there's one there. So click it with your left mouse button, and hold down shift, find another green marker. There's one there. And there's one there. So basically by clicking three green markers that are on the floor, we're telling Blender that this is the floor. So where it says orientation, you can now click floor and it'll basically know that this is basically the zero point on the z-axis in your blender scene. So now we've done that, we can click set as background, which sets the tracked footage as the camera background, and we can click set up tracking scene. Right, now if you go up here, we're going to add a workspace, the general layout workspace. And there's a big default cube in the middle, which you can click and press X to delete that. And now if you play, you can kind of see this camera is moving around in the middle. And that basically now, Blender has actually worked out not only where the camera is in 3D space and how it's moving, but also if you select it, you can see it's also worked out the focal length of the cameras, 35.56 millimeters, which is practically spot on. So by pressing zero on your number pad, we can actually view the camera view. And what we've done, so Blend is quite good here. So it's set up a couple of things really. So this big ground plane here actually doesn't appear in the render. So if we press F12 to render the scene, you'll see that that plane doesn't appear. So the use of this plane is what called a shadow catcher. So any object now that we add to the scene, its shadow will be cast on, on this plane and we'll see the shadow in the render, but not the rest of this plane. So if you go to the compositing tab, Blender has set up really nice sort of scene setup. So we've got the movie clip over here, which is basically just what we shot in the camera. And then we've got render layers. We've got two render layers, a foreground render layer and a background render layer. Let's add a car to our scene. So press N on your keyboard to bring up this menu here and click on Blender Kit. If you haven't got Blender Kit installed by now, um, then it's well worth it. It's got loads of free models and HDRs, which we're gonna use in this very project. So uh, I'll put some instructions on how to download it in here as well. Click on this little eye icon, and we're going to click search filters, and we're going to search, in fact, let's just type in Ferrari. Okay, we're gonna, just gonna hide this ground plane here, and we're gonna click on the foreground um, collection. Find a Ferrari that you like. This one here, Ferrari 260, is the one I'm gonna choose. Click and just drag it down onto your scene. And I'm just basically lining up with this uh, sort of label on the tripod. Now this is quite a, a big, um, dense model. If your computer's struggling, I'd recommend you choose another car. Okay, the first thing we can see, this car is just too big. So click on the car in the outliner. Click on item, and where it says scale, we're gonna select all three of those and we're gonna type in 0.35. That brings the Ferrari to about the correct scale. 
We also need to rotate the Ferrari on the Z axis. I'm just gonna to go to wireframe mode just to make this a little bit quicker. So just adjust the Z angle of your car till it lines up with the parking bay. You can actually scroll through your footage now and see the Ferrari is actually tracking nicely into the car park without sliding across. So we're just gonna grab this little bit. So press G to grab, press Shift and Z to make sure you're not moving it up or down. And just tweak it on the X and Y axes until you're happy with the position. Okay, that looks good. Uh, Blender's also put a light in the scene, which we don't need. So we're just gonna click on the light and press X to delete the light. And what we're going to do, we're gonna add a HDRI to light the car. So if you click on HDRI in Blender Kit, you can see we've got all of these HDRIs. Now what we want to try and do is match the sky that's actually in the video footage. So you can see we don't need a sort of a very bright sunny blue sky because unfortunately in England here, we quite often have very cloudy gray skies. So I already found an HDRI earlier that I thought matched. If you just type in train over here, we've got this one here called old train station. So if just click and drag that into your scene. And just click OK. Instant light on the car. So if we press F12 now, you can see the render of that. So as we're rendering it, I'll just talk you through a couple of things. Blender actually does two renders, two separate renders for this project. It does a render of the foreground, a render of the shadow, and then in the compositor, it joins it all together. So a couple of things I've just noticed. Firstly, it looks like we have motion blur checked. So this isn't quite sharp, so let me just switch that off. Okay, that's great. Now, we can actually work a little bit of magic in the compositing settings. Okay, so in the compositor, we can see We've got the footage that we shot, the video film. We've got the shadow, which has been rendered separately. And then we've got the car, which doesn't have a shadow. So by adjusting these alpha over nodes, you can actually reduce the opacity of the shadow. But the nice thing about having these layers separately is that you can actually adjust them separately as well. So for example, if you wanted to add a hue saturation node, let's do shift and A and search for hue. we could actually just increase the saturation of the car and change the color of the car without affecting any of the other parts of the image. So one thing we can do to kind of bring the image all together is actually add some color correction on the final image. So by doing Shift and A to add a node, go to color and click on the color balance. Now we're gonna add that in here. You want to make sure that the output of the color balance nodes goes to both composite and the viewer. So now we can actually add in like a cyan and orange sort of process. So we can make the, um, the shadows more blue. We can make the highlights more orange. I think that's probably a little bit too much. So you can actually dial it back using the factor. But by color correcting the whole of the image here, it brings the whole image together and just makes it look even more realistic. One last little thing I've just noticed, if you zoom in on the car, the wheels, the car wheels are actually not quite touching the floor. So let's just go back and fix that. So pop back into the layout tab, click on your Ferrari. And if you go into this, if you go into viewport shading view and just click show on the ground, we can actually just grab the Ferrari. Let's just move it down by 0.02. Okay, I think those tires are just touching the floor a little bit too much. Let's just reduce that to minus 0 0.017. That's perfect. We can just see the tires touching the ground now. So all that's left to do now is render out the whole animation. So go to your render settings, uh, choose a directory. The file format needs to be FFmpeg video. Encoding, change that from Matroska to MPEG4. Output quality can be perceptually lossless and you're good to go really. So click on render animation up here. I'm gonna render it out and I'll show you the results in a minute.